Hi everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Duane, and in this special episode, we're helping the UAE mark its 47th birthday. We come face to face with an artwork installation of the nation's founding father, the late Sheikh Zayed, who was born 100 years ago. And we talk business with a member of one of the UAE's most influential and entrepreneurial families, and he shares his stories about Sheikh Zayed. And he held, my, held me by the ear and uh, squeezed very hard. And I thought I did something wrong. That's why he is punishing me. But he said to me, look, I will give you an advice. Stay tuned to find out exactly what the UAE's first president had to say. But first, let's take a stroll through the sands of time to find out exactly how the UAE came to be. It's hard to imagine Abu Dhabi and Dubai without their signature skyscrapers. But not so long ago, sand dunes stood where cosmopolitan cities now do. For 151 years, the region comprised of sheikdoms bound by a British protectorate territory called the Trucial States. With the withdrawal of the British in 1971, Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nahyan, the then ruler of Abu Dhabi, worked to unify all seven emirates. And on December 2nd, 1971, six signed the decree, with Ras al Khaimah joining later that same year. Having first discovered oil in the 1950s, the UAE has striven to become a regional and global economic power. However, the journey was not without its challenges, not least with the global financial crisis of 2008 and the past decade's dramatic oil price swings. Today, the UAE still relies heavily on oil revenues, despite it having the most diversified economy in the GCC, with investments in a wide range of sectors from tourism to construction. The backbone of the UAE's economy is its labor force, an international community which calls the Emirates home and makes up the world's sixth largest international migrant population, according to the UN. Every 2nd of December, Emiratis and expats come together to celebrate the country's founding with fireworks and traditional festivities. And this year, more than 22,000 people took part in the official celebrations at the Zayed Sports City with the current rulers of the seven emirates uniting a population together, just as their forefathers had almost five decades ago. Before the UAE was formally unified, key Emirati businessmen were working closely with Sheikh Zayed to develop the country's infrastructure and map out its corporate landscape. Dalin Hassan met up with the head of the Al Fahim Group, one of the UAE's oldest family businesses and a company whose story is interwoven with the formation of this young nation. Before there were roads, the late entrepreneur Abdel Jalil Fahim, the right-hand man of the country's first ruler, paved the way as the first importer of cars into Abu Dhabi in the early 60s. He established the pioneering company El Fahim, which sparked the area's growth with electricity and water systems, helping to build the nation's infrastructure. His son Mohammed started to run the family business at the age of 20, successfully leading three generations of the family group and expanding its services, including real estate, hospitality, and manufacturing. I caught up with the honorary chairman of Al Fahim Group, who shared the stories from the past and his future plans. Mohammed Abd Jalil Fahim, warm welcome to Euronews. Thank you for having me. Your family business grew fulfilling the needs of the country uh, at the time of its founding. But today, the business model has changed. Uh, are you looking to expand to more industries? In the last 35 years, we uh, managed to go from a small enterprise to a, a big uh, business covering um, uh, the United Arab Emirates and other countries. We can only cope what, with what we have. To increase the business, we'll need to invest. And uh, the market at the moment does not support this uh, investment for the time being. What are the challenges that family businesses face today? I think the challenges are uh, inheritance, moving from first generation to second generation to third generation. We are not used to it. Those companies that are now existing, but with a lot of difficulties and needs a lot of government support in the, in the form of rules, regulations, 
You are a believer in transforming family businesses into shareholding companies and you were the first to do so in the UAE. Why was that important? It was important to safeguard the companies from being dismantled after the first generation. I believe that sole companies should go into shareholding companies. We are now in a position to go actually public if we can. Your family's business was established long before the UAE became a nation. How have you seen the country evolve since then and what do you think is still missing? In the Emirate, we advanced too fast. In such a short time, we moved from bookkeeping to electronic and computers. This left us with a void in the middle. Today, we are left on our own to face a very strong competition. And to survive this competition, we need uh, a government support because not all our young generation are interested in going into businesses. I have three sons, none of them in the business. You grew up in the house of Sheikh Zayed. What is your fondest memory living with the founder of the UAE? His kindness, his down-to-earth uh, simplicity, in his way of life. He always believed that what we do today is for the future generation, not just for us, not to be selfish. Do you have any funny stories you could share? He called me once in his majlis and he held, my, held me by the ear and uh, squeezed very hard and I thought I did something wrong. That's why he's punishing me. But he said to me, look, I will give you an advice. If you follow it, you will succeed in your business life. If you don't, you will not make it. I said, Your Highness, whatever you say. He said, put your money in, or invest your money with those who have money of their own. And put your children with families who have families or children of their own. So what advice would you give young entrepreneurs looking to succeed in the business? Be faithful, trustful, and hardworking. And we must show the public we are worthy of their trust. Mohammed Abdul Jalil Fahim, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. For the past year, right across the UAE, cultural events have been staged in celebration of the life and times of the nation's founding father. Salim El Said went along to explore a permanent tribute to Sheikh Zayed, which represents the leader's vision for his country and his quest for a tolerant and peaceful society. Within a frame 30 meters high, the visage of the UAE's founder and first ruler, Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, looks on to the city of Abu Dhabi. A man who shaped the Emirates is portrayed using over a thousand multifaceted shapes, hanging from nearly just as many cables. And at night, his image comes to life, with five types of geometric objects, each uniquely reflecting 750 lights from below and over a thousand beaming down from above. The glimmering silhouette of the late ruler floats in the air visible from various angles and fitting its title, The Constellation, as it was intended by its creator, American sculptor and artist, Ralph Helmick. I wanted something that the viewer, we the viewers, would help create and that wouldn't be completely straightforward from all perspectives all the time. And I think this is uh, essential to how the piece should be experienced. The labor of love took about seven years to create from inception to its revelation this year. Like the structure itself, the project was a combination of traditional and modern. Ralph's team of six designers in Boston used computer imaging to conceptualize the figurative art modeled after a geometric Islamic architecture. Then various teams from the US to the UAE built, put together, and packed parts of the structure into crates to be sent off to Abu Dhabi for the final assembly at the Founders Memorial Park. 
Every leader leaves a legacy behind them, and that's literally the case for the late ruler. A few steps away from his memorial is an exhibit, where visitors can see the more personal side of how Sheikh Zayed connected to the world before the age of social media. Engraved on its walls is the foundation of Sheikh Zayed's foreign policy. In his own words, goodwill and the happiness of any state is reflected in its relations with other states. An idea reflected in five galleries through his personal memorabilia in a showcase called Sheikh Zayed and Europe, a journey. Starting with his very first passport issued in Bahrain in 1951 in preparation for his premier trip to the European continent. His first stop was Paris. What started as a customary business trip for oil concessions turned into something more for the Abu Dhabi ruler. Fascinated by landmarks and museums such as the Louvre, according to those close to him, he had said one day there will be a museum like that for his people. When the Emirates was formed, Sheikh Zayed knew it was a very small country. He wanted to build relations and he was very active. He would go to neighboring countries and beyond because he wanted to bring his country up to the international level. He was really trying to build uh, lasting relationships. Relationships which Emirati citizens are able to enjoy today, as the UAE passport was recently considered the most powerful to have worldwide, according to data collected by the Passport Index in their 2018 ranking. Well, that's a wrap of this week's show. We hope you enjoyed it. And before I say goodbye, here are some UAE residents sharing how they celebrated National Day on social media. Emirati Abdullah celebrated National Day with his nephew in Bulgaria at the peak of Rilla Mountain. And Naomi from India, who's lived in Dubai for 23 years, took this nap calling the Emirate a little piece of heaven.